what should you fly in 40 degrees of heat down under? Is this the sexiest LSA being developed? And biz jets, luxury or necessity? You're watching fullflap.tv. I'm Vicky Ferrer. Just before I start, if you didn't know, fullflap.tv is all about having a laugh in aircraft, either as a job or just for the sheer fun of it. We do something every single week, and because we like flying rather than spending all of our time in the editing suite, we normally just update you with what everyone's been talking about in flying. As often as we can, we also film the things we've been getting up to, like trying out new aircraft, challenges, races, and other new things. So we have something for you to watch every single week. And don't forget to sign up to the newsletter and you'll get to hear about all when new shows are going out and what's happening. Now, with any luck, you're watching me in high definition this week. Very snazzy. We're giving it a try, and what we're trying to do is roll it out to as many of our support sites as we can. So if you have the bandwidth, you should be able to see me crystal clear. Let's move on, or Rick, the producer, will get me to film this bit all over again. Right, we couldn't help but laugh at this. Do you remember I told you, I think about two weeks ago, that Euro aircraft manufacturer Airbus wanted to provide the next Air Force One? Likely. We thought that would never happen, and clearly you didn't either. And it looks like Airbus have finally realised as well. They appear to have pulled out of the running, which means that President Obama's next aircraft will be all American. Well, apart from the bits that are produced in Asia. If you live in India, as I know some of you do, you guys are having a great time with aviation. Both military and commercial flying is strong. If you weren't there, Aero India took place last week in Bengaluru, and there was a strong turnout, as always. Flight training organisations, simulator manufacturers, and you could even pick up a ballistic missile system, if you ever happen to need one. We'd love to hear from you, by the way, if you are watching us in India. and Let us know what's going on there. Here's the email address. We've known about this aircraft for a while, but it occurred to us this week, have we reached a point when an aircraft is sexier than a supercar? Hmm. Ferrari or Akon A5? This has to be one of the best looking LSAs out there. Look at those lines. You know, we've had the performance for years, but just not the looks. The guys behind the Akon A5 have done a great job, and it looks like we'll be able to buy this very soon. The first set of tests have been finished. This is actually the first prototype test flight. If you look at the cockpit, you can see that it was designed with car drivers in mind. I think it looks like the interior of a car, doesn't it? The only downside is that it's not going to be quick, at least for an aircraft. Top speed will be about 120 miles per hour, that's 105 knots or 194 kilometers per hour. Part of the problem is the weight, but look at what this extra weight gives you. In the past, when you had a fold-away aircraft, you had to stand in the rain for 20 minutes unbolting everything. But now it's just like a convertible's roof. You just press a button and let it get on with it. Then you just put it on a trailer. Prices will be around mm, 140,000 US, which isn't bad for something like this, especially if you share it with a couple of mates and you should be able to get it at the tail end of next year. Australia next, but first a quickie for you Rotary fans. Sikorsky did some tests the other day of this, the new S76D. It's a nice aircraft, but what's got us talking was the anti-icing system on the rotors. It's taken long enough for anti-icing to get fixed wing aircraft, so this really is exciting because it massively increases the type of conditions you can go up in. The tests were pretty basic. It got up to 40 knots, about 50 miles per hour, but everything did go well. Oh, and that should also be out at the end of next year too. Okay, more stories in a moment, but first, we get sent flying videos every so often, and to be honest, most are pretty boring. Then suddenly, a guy from Western Australia sent us this, and we were blown away. So much so that Brett Company is now part of the FullFlap.TV team down under. Take it away, Brett. G'day, Rick. Well, I saw your review last year on the Czech Aircraft Works Sport Cruiser. So I went down to the Bunbury Flying School, which is about two hours south of Perth in Western Australia, and I took their Sport Cruiser for a fly. What a great little aircraft. It's an all-metal ultralight. You get this one and you can fly it under the Recreational Aviation Australia certification. I'm currently doing mine. I've just logged 11 hours and uh, oh, you'll have to congratulate me. I've just done my, my very first solo, so I'm a very happy man indeed. Lots more training to come though, but more on the aircraft. If you want something that's fun to fly and pretty much inexpensive as well, I think this is the aircraft for you. The fuel consumption, 11 litres per hour. Now that's not bad coming out of the 100 horsepower Rotax Donk. 
Now we've had some hot temperatures down this way between 35 and 40 degrees C. Look at that beautiful weather. It's been absolutely perfect. And this aircraft seems to handle that kind of heat very, very well. We sit the RPMs about 4,600, gives us about 85 to 90 knots in the cruise, uh, which gives us that great fuel economy, which is brilliant. It's also got lots of storage. If you want to take it away for an overnighter, uh, 18 kilos in each wing and 18 kilo behind the cockpit. Uh, the wife and I duck down to the southwest uh, near Margaret River for all the wine and cheese, and uh, we can load it up and come back without any hassles. But I tell you what, if you want to learn how to fly, you're in Australia, you want to look at your ultralight license, look under raa.asn.au, or even better, log on to the Bunbury Flight School website. It is Bunbury Flying School. Dot com dot au. Come flying with us. And Rick, I hear it's a bit cold uh, up your way there. Mate, if you need to come and enjoy a bit of warmth, you're more than welcome to come and join us. And we'll take you for another fly in this uh, Czech Aircraft Works Sport Cruiser. Lots of fun, inexpensive. I don't think there's any way, any better way to get into flying. That's all for now. Hopefully we'll have more on fullflap.tv. For now, though, uru. We're giving Brett a crash course in fullflap.tv editing and producing. So if you have an aircraft for him to talk about in Western Australia, give us an email and we'll get him to come around and see you. Have you heard of the Detroit 3? Probably, but if not, these are the auto manufacturers that flew from the same airport to the same meeting to beg for $25 billion of public money in three separate aircraft. Pretty stupid, and not surprisingly, it annoyed a lot of people. Luckily, there are more intelligent people in the aviation business than in the car business, and people like Cessna are hitting back with a big awareness campaign. The fact is, biz jets and commercial travel make sense. It was just the way that these people use them. We know how bad commercial airports and travel are now, unless you're in the cockpit. So it's not surprising people are flying themselves. You get there refreshed in a quarter of the time, and despite what people with dreadlocks say, time is money. But it's funny that Beechcraft have also jumped on the bandwagon, pointing out their King A350 could have happily transported the Detroit 3 at 300 knots with much less fuel. We'll keep an eye on those campaigns for you. I just wanted to mention Leicester Aero Club again. I didn't have any airfield pictures for you last week, so here is one. The guys at Leicester have embedded fullflap.tv on their website and we couldn't be happier than being associated with them. They're in their 80th year and not surprisingly with such a history they have a large number of tail draggers with Pitts, Taylorcraft, a Chipmunk, Ryan PT-22, Osters and so on. They'll happily teach you to fly if you don't already so check out their website and give them a call if you're anywhere near there. Just finally, do you play flight sims? Well, what's going on with Microsoft? The firm have laid off most of the development team and people are wondering what's going to happen next. It might be worth mentioning X-Plane, which a lot of people say handles more like a real aircraft. Cirrus like it and if you too want to check it out, the demo, it's here. We're hoping to take you night flying soon, so if you've never done that, it should be fun. Especially since Rick will be going up and he's colourblind. That's enough for this week. You're watching fullflap.tv. I'm Vicky Farah.